In this lesson, we are going to be taking a look at the element symbols when we're given additional information about the mass numbers and the atomic numbers. And those will be these, these numbers that are listed along with the element symbol. One thing to remember is the mass number will almost always be larger than your atomic number. Uh, there's only one exception with hydrogen where the two numbers are the same, but the mass number will never be smaller than the atomic number. So we look this then that the top number is our mass number and the bottom number of us is our atomic number. Please recall that that atomic number, we say we go ape because the atomic number tells us the number of protons and if it's a neutral atom, it tells us the number of electrons. The top number, the mass number, is the total number of the particles that contribute significant mass to an atom. In this case, it's just the protons and the neutrons. So we could come up with a very simple algebraic expression for this. The mass number we could say is P plus N is equal to the number of protons plus neutrons. The atomic number, again, is just the number of protons. So putting this into an equation, if we take P plus N and then subtract the P, then we are left with N. And since this is true, we could say the mass number minus the atomic number tells us the number of neutrons. We could also say the mass number minus the number of protons tells us the number of neutrons. So we're going to apply this to a chart. You'll have a chart like this on tests. Um, this should be very easy points to get. If you, At this point, if you think you know how to do this, uh, pause this lesson and, and try it out. And if you're still a little bit uncertain, continue on with the lesson. When you're given a chart like this, the very first thing to make sure you get the easy points uh, cleared out is remember to go ape. And again, that means that your atomic number, your number of protons, and your number of electrons will all be the same. The numbers in those three columns should be identical. So if you have information on any of those, you can fill out the others. So in our first row, we have an atomic number of nine, which means our number of protons and our number of electrons will be nine. Our second row, we don't have any information about the atomic number or number of protons or electrons. So we'll go to our third row, where we see we have 20 electrons, which means we can fill in 20 for our atomic number and the number of protons. We go to our, third, our fourth row, and we see, again, the atomic number is 13. We can fill in the protons and electron columns. And then in our final row, we see the number of protons is 26, which means we can fill in the atomic number and the number of electrons is 26. At this point, we have completed all that we can on the, on the atomic number, number of protons, and number of electrons. And so we'll turn our attention to the mass number. The mass number, as you recall, is just the total number of protons plus neutrons. So if we have that information for any of our columns, we can add the number of protons plus neutrons. And we see in our first row, we don't know the mass number, but we do know the number of protons and the number of neutrons. We can add the 9 plus the 10 and get 19 and fill in our mass number. Um, in our third row now is the only mass number we're missing, and we know the number of protons is 20 and the number of neutrons is 21. We add those together and get 41, and now we're complete with our mass number column. So we will turn our attention to the number of neutrons. Now recall that the, number of, the mass number is the protons plus neutrons, so if we subtract the number of protons from the number of neutrons, or I'm sorry, get the number of protons subtracted from the mass number, we will get the number of neutrons. So we take a look at our fourth row, and we see now that our mass number is 27, our number of protons is 13, so we take 27 minus 13 and get 14 and can fill that in. Or conversely, we could just say, well, the number of protons plus the neutrons have to add up to the mass number. What number do we have to add the 13 to get 27? It's 14. We do a similar process for the fifth row. Uh, 56 minus 26 gives us 30. And again, the protons plus the neutrons do add up to the mass number. So now we are left with only uh, one, or one row that we haven't finished. And in this case, we don't have any information directly about the atomic number, protons, or electrons. So now we have to recall 
that our mass number is the number of protons plus the neutrons, which means that if we take our mass number and subtract out the number of neutrons this time, we'll be left with our number of protons. And so since 14 minus 7 gives us 7, we can fill that in for our number of protons as 7. And now we're back to being able to go ape because now we know the number of protons, so we can fill in our atomic number as 7 and our number of electrons is 7. And now we have completed our table and gotten some pretty easy points. And as always with your work, you should check your work when you're done. So we check it, and our first check is, did we go ape? Are our columns for the atomic number, the number of protons and electrons, are those columns identical? And we see that they are. Our second check then is to check to make sure that our protons and our neutrons add up to our mass number. And for our table here, that is true. And so we have a reasonable check on our work.